All right. Well, this is going to be a little different. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, power and speeds, Mike. 908-751-0211. Uh, Tom got called away to an emergency meeting. I was not planning on having a show. I was going to not do much of nothing. And then I hear a rumble come up my driveway. wonder who that could have been. And it sounded very suspiciously like a Chevy SS belonging to my friend Jeff. So Jeff is here. So I figured, why not? We'll just talk to you guys for a few minutes and see if there's anything on your mind, anything we need to know or should know, or anything you want to know. And again, call. You know, this is like the Mike show when he didn't have anything to do last time. So I'm just sort of here. And I I feel bad. I told Tad, don't bother, dude. Tom's not here. Tell everybody we'll do it tomorrow or whatever. I don't know when he's coming back. He had to go to Maryland. Um, I don't know if Tad posted it or not. And I know the show didn't publish again. I promise I will get on it. Tad told me yesterday, and I forgot last night. When I get off here tonight, I'm going to go look. So, Jeff, <laughs> um, I gave you some homework. Yes. How far did you get on your homework? Uh, I got through volumes one and two of the uh, basic okay. tuning, GM tuning. Okay. Now, what Jeff is talking about is Greg Banish's uh, video DVDs. Now, I touched on them a little bit, I think, last Monday. Yes. Because uh, I, I got them, like, Monday. So, like, watched as much as I could before the show. And then when the show was over, I went right back to watching them. Um, Extremely informative. Extremely. Yes. Now, you had a little knowledge of tuning. Excuse me, of tuning. Did this build on what you had, or could you have started from scratch? Honestly, I could have started from scratch with these. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it... These things, and, and I mean, look, the, the kind of the plan was, is we were going to have, uh, I was going to have Banish come on today and do like a whole show based on what's covered in the DVDs, why you need this, how, because I mean, you, you know, the problem for me, like the motor side of things, I, when was it? Like 2000 and when was the last motor I built? Not yours, but I mean, like when I was actually doing this every day, it was probably like 2006. You know, and, and the, the shit from my brother, that really doesn't count there. They were pretty simple, mm-hmm. but re- watching this and, and the testing methods and the discussion of why things happen, why you choose the timing you do, how you actually determine how much air is getting in the motor is all the mathematical explanation for the things we used to test on the dyno that we didn't apply the math to. Right. So for me, it was extremely interesting, but. Greg got into all the stuff from mass air calibration that, quite frankly, I think a lot of people don't do exactly like he said. I'm pretty sure they don't. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to it, and it's time-consuming. It, mm-hmm. it would be yes. somewhat time-consuming. But it, it, it's really an amazing set of videos. And they got into, like, the virtual volumetric efficiency of the GM, which was something I specifically had a question on. Mm-hmm. The scaling, which was another thing that, you know, I had questions on. It, it, it's really a good watch. Now, look, they ain't cheap. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. If you got, um, I got uh, the basic GM, advanced GM, and then there's like an advanced, like overall that goes over, and I, I watched them all. Mm-hmm. The advanced overall, and, and I know this points to GM specific, but I mean, I don't think it's just GM. I mean, to you, I, I mean, the methods could be carried to any computer, couldn't they? I would think so. Yeah. I mean, an engine's still an engine. Yeah, it's a... Uh, are they on torrent? Oh, th- dude, that ain't even right. <laughs> that ain't even right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see if there's any questions here. Any of you idiots want to call on 908-751-0211? I see Nitra Scott's here in Utah. Cold, snowy, and politically bullshit. Well... Maybe for you, <laughs> but whatever. Um, he got into, I'm trying to think some of the other things, like ignition timing, like how to find best ignition timing. Um, trying to think, what are some of the things you saw? that, that and Not to put you on the spot, but. No, the, the, the biggest thing was the, um, the find in the math curve. Mm-hmm. I really found that interesting. I mean, you, you don't think about that kind of stuff. I mean, I've seen plenty of tuners tune i'm sorry calibrators calibrate 
and um, you know, they'll do a couple of warm up laps on the dyno, and then whop, you know, mm-hmm. start hitting the gas and make some changes, hit the gas, make some changes. But after watching um, Banish's process, it makes a lot more sense to just take your time, you know. Well, I th- I think one of the the things that I really took away from it mm-hmm. is. Certain things here are are known variables, or at least they should be. They should be like the fuel injection calibra- uh, the fuel injector calibration, and your data that you put into a computer. And again, this isn't just GM. Mm-hmm. This is any computer that works on <clears throat> you deciding how much air it's taking in and how much fuel you have to give it. When when you look at it from that perspective, if if you don't have your fuel right. And you're going to calibrate a math on the car because not all of us have. I mean, I don't. <laughs> I mean, Greg might, but I don't have some kind of magic bench to calibrate a mass air meter. Right. So you you use the car, and then your constant or your known variable has to be the amount of fuel you're putting in, in order to know what this thing needs to do. And if you have the fuel wrong, kind of everything falls apart from there. It, it's it's a pretty neat deal. And I saw one guy in there wrote a, a spark hook test hook test, yeah. which is what, he what I saw. About that too. Yeah. There's like all of the points and everything that he did kind of, for me, it closed in the circle of things that I had questions on. Like mm-hmm. there, there were a couple, you know, items that I didn't quite understand why you would do the things you would do. And he got into great detail about the injectors and mm-hmm. he shows you how to do tests yes. of the injectors. Now, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm not planning on buying a $30,000, you know, set of injector testers when I could buy injector dynamics and they come with properly formatted and valid data. Right. But it it was just, I think it's really worthwhile. And honestly, I can't wait to get some kind of dyno here. I really can't. Because I I just, just for me to have it to learn and to play. And look, it's all this is. Yeah. No different than a car, you know, that you're, you're building the fuck around with it. It's we're playing. Well, I, I want to play and I want to learn. I mean, that's all I was thinking about since the first disc. So I guess you, you couldn't get any farther. You just ran out of time and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, one and two address kind of specific things that you would be interested in, you know, the first two discs, but the Blu-ray discs, they cover everything. Like kind of, kind of all the real ins and outs of it. Uh, I think you're really going to like that one. All right, let's see if anybody's got anything to say here. Let me do respect to factory calibration. Blah blah blah. blah. Steady state on the dyno. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah blah. Yeah, ain't nobody got a lot to say on there. Um, <clears throat> trying to think what else there is for me to really talk about. Get Allison to get you a hub dyno. Listen, uh, I do pretty well. I I don't think I've hidden that. I buy the toys I want and, you know, but I get a really hard time justifying like 70 grand for a hub dyno. There's just, there's no way I could do that. Uh, I mean, it would be nice to have. For me, it would be ideal because it could get squirreled away when you're not using them. I don't really want to devote a section of the shop just to a dyno that's going to get used once in a while. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a pain in the ass. Like we use a forklift to move stuff around, race cars in and out of the attic, everything else. I I don't want to have to worry about driving over the fucking thing. Yeah, you know, so that's out. I, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna keep my eyes open and see what I can find if, if there's anything that comes up. Status of the drag week car. The the drag week car is essentially done at Tim's. So now it's gonna go from Tim's to Howard. And at some point, when Howard and I both have time, we have to talk about the actual plan on where to move forward from here and and how. I know he has a lot of components already. The thing that makes me feel good is this kind of stuff that Tim had to do was kind of difficult. It's not what you do every day. Everyone's different. Uh, I don't want to say everyone's different. I mean, a Corvette's a Corvette, but the the chassis side of things, there's a lot of creativity in there. And I'm not taking away anything that Howard does, mm-hmm. but Howard does this. Like like we, <laughs> Jeff and I have both talked to Howard and we've been on the phone together and Jeff's like, yeah, well, mine's, you know, 2015 SS and He's like, oh yeah, that's old shit. Mm-hmm. So to him, this is all easy stuff. So we should be pretty good, uh, I, I would imagine. Uh, I don't have any update on FUD um, that's worth sharing <laughs> as far as what he's doing. Um, I've got a couple funny pictures that maybe I'll send to Todd to post since I've been boycotting Facebook. Uh, but other than that, you know, no, the, the car is good. Uh, Cage Nice is a difficult, yeah, it's difficult in a street car. He did a beautiful job. He really did. 
Uh, what the Tahoe? Am I taking the Tahoe truck? No, no, I get it. Th- that. That's my project. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind, everybody, Mike's learning how to TIG weld. <laughs> so I don't know how a pretty it's going to be and B how long it's going to be. Uh, I, I do know that I like driving my little truck, so it's going to be done as quickly as possible. I will say that. Mm-hmm. And then I guess you're already, you haven't even made a pass on a car since you got it recalibrated and you're already talking about turbochargers. I know. <laughs> you're an addict man <laughs> um so let's see what other things we got to talk about i haven't heard anything on tad's car i don't know what he's doing he needed a clutch that was the last i heard and mm-hmm. apparently it is in fact and it was verified by a third party not tom or tad it was very close to being done so i don't mm-hmm. i don't know what what's going to be up with him uh, i'm trying to think if there's anything else where is the scarf wear mofo um maryland he uh he had to go to a customer's. Uh, I don't know what customer that would be. It might be, you know, JJ, the Subaru guy. I have no idea. But apparently it was last minute. What kind of welder did I buy? Um, oh, boy. Here's where I'm going to get abused. I bought an Everlast. Now, some people will say that it's junk. Uh, some people would say, why didn't you buy a Miller? Uh, Lincoln, you know, you're going to get all the people saying all the different flavors of welders. Mm-hmm. I spent a lot of time. I did a lot of looking at, you know, what machines are rated good. Uh, the Everlast looked like it had great ratings. And there's a couple people that use them that kind of used only Millers that said, don't, don't bother buying a Miller, buy an Everlast. I hear you, Scott, made in China. There's Scott, you know, Nitro Scott, made in China. It's got a five-year warranty, dude. <laughs> I, I mean, that kind of, kind of knocks that argument away. Uh, I got the thing I got, oh Christ, what is it? A 255 EXTIS, some shit, a whole bunch, you know, four letters after it. So it's 255 amp, came with a liquid cold torch, an air cold torch. Apparently both of them are shit. <clears throat> uh, came with a pedal that's shit. Uh, I'm supposed to get another pedal. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to think what else, uh, but and I got the thing for under 2000 bucks. High frequency machine, so you could do aluminum or, or steel, and uh, I'll try it. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out. And let's see. I'll teach you how to TIG weld. If you get back on Facebook, fuck. All right, look. A bunch <laughs> of people have asked me what happened. All right. Here's the easiest way to put it. On my phone, I have no joke. Probably, I'm guessing, but I bet you I got four thousand contacts. I bet you those 4,000 contacts when, when I had installed the Facebook messenger app, because Tad was fucking me, Tom was fucking me, Tom was sending me links. I couldn't open. He said, install Facebook on your phone. Just make sure you say no to everything. Now I'm already kind of paranoid about Facebook to begin with. Mm -hmm. I said no to everything. Now I'm getting requests from customers looking for power speed, Mike, it, they're sending me friend requests. And I'm like, that guy works for a middleware provider in like in Denmark. How the fuck did he hear about the show? No, it was coming across on messenger. Hey, do you know this person? And it was including my fucking name. Mm-hmm. So yeah, fuck Facebook. Uh, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, uh, I have another account. I told everybody I have another real down low account. Um, I'm going to try to find a way to get that all activated and working again. And that's what I'm going to use. As long as it's not tied to your phone, <clears throat> you'll be fine. Any of your personal stuff, your email, your phone or anything. Yeah, but I didn't tie any, and I didn't tie power and speed to my phone number. I just put the app on my phone and then it's like, it did it. Yeah, but it's in your contact list. Yeah. Your, my, my own numbers right. in my contact list. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was a bad deal. So not, not that I have to hide from any customers. I certainly don't. But by the same token, I don't want my customers hearing me talking, like acting like a jerk off. You know, if I'm going to be a jerk off for me, I'm a jerk off for me. But I don't need a guy who's, you know, a higher level, you know, industry guy being like, wow, Mike really likes cars. And ooh, what do you say about a woman there? (laughs) You know, I mean, (laughs) it's, it's just, it's just not a, not a great deal. (laughs) All right. Let's see. Anybody else got anything? I'm looking through the chat room here. Uh, Yeah, not a lot going on here. No, no substantive, substantive questions. Uh, I think Alan 
was going to talk about a few things or ask me a few questions. He uh, he did not make it on. Uh, let's see. Anything else interesting? Nope. Not really. That's it. Uh, the app metal for Facebook. Uh, just use the mobile pages so you don't need Messenger. Yeah. Yeah, I tried that for a while, but there, there was just all kinds of problems. I mean, honestly, I wasn't using the Facebook Messenger for the longest time, and I was getting by. But it, it you know, get to be, can you talk about the Corvette powertrain? Not a lot to know. Um, uh, iron block, four-inch crank, all manly rotating. LS3 head that was uh, just touched up, you know, like a, like a mild port from actually the guy to tune Jeff's car, uh, tune time. Um, yeah, that's who did it. <laughs> I didn't know that's who it was until Tom told me. Tom got it done. Um, precision turbos. <clears throat> uh, I am, this, we'll go through this again. They're 64, 66s, Gen 2s. And they're V-band exhaust housing. And I don't mean V-band outlet. I mean V-band inland, inlet and outlet. Three inch in. And we talked briefly the other day about exhaust housings. I am told this will be more than adequate to do whatever I need to do. I've been told that by a million people. Mm-hmm. I have my doubts, <laughs> but they, they said that it's fine. Um, let's see. What else do you need to know uh, about the engine? Nothing. All the rest of the stuff. I mean, it's regular shit, mm-hmm. regular lifters, uh, regular oil pump, GM timing chain, a, a C5R chain, mm-hmm. just regular shit. I mean, and we'll see it. Same thing with rockers. All that stuff lasts. Oh, all manly springs and retainers. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Why precision versus bullseye or versus anybody else? Real simple. Uh, Those particular turbochargers started life for someone else that decided that they were going to go a different direction. So there was a bargain to be had. And they are actually, according to precision, ideal. I called them and asked them what, you know, with the proper guidance, you know, these were good guys that said, talk to this guy at Precision. He recommended exactly these turbos. So they were a deal. Um, I'll tell you what the pair of them cost. You're going to be upset. Uh, Everybody was looking for a deal on stuff. I basically got the pair for 1500 bucks and they had like no time on them. Like nothing, like kind of, kind of run and they changed their mind. So that was a deal. That was a real, I mean, I think that those things probably knew they're probably like 1800 a piece or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. So yeah, it was a very, very good deal. Uh, let's see what else. Agree with the size 100%. Well, I'm glad you do. <laughs> I tell, <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Uh, I'm not, you know, the, that's why like my big question is now is when I'm trying to learn about the turbo side is exhaust housings. And that's why, you know, some of talking to real street was asking about the exhaust housing of the turbo. Cause I think that's one of the more misunderstood sides. Everybody always seems to talk about how big the compressor section is. Cause that tells you how much air you can move, but you also have to know how much force you have to move that air and how you can get the exhaust out of the housing without too much back pressure. So I, again, I have my doubts, I have my doubts. Uh, smaller displacement Corvette engine will be in vain. The Echo and the Mustang. I guess I'm probably talking about the Lamas stuff. All right. Well, do any of you guys have anything else? Jeff, I'm leaving it up to you, man. You're my wingman today. You got to talk. It's like having Tad here. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got nothing. Yeah. The car's, the car's done as far as, you know, ready to race, but I got nothing. I, I can't do anything else. I don't have a dyno. You know, I don't have the interface. I just... Yeah, but I mean, the, the main thing, and what I told Banish yeah. is, you know, in exchange for me getting the DVDs, I said, look, I said, there's going to be some other people that, you know, basically I told them two other people that I wanted to be able to look at this as a test to, to more than anything, tell him how it works, you know, and, and how good, you know, th- this is tough because I don't want to sound like I'm blowing Banish, like, oh my God, he's the greatest guy in the world, but he has a different perspective. He has it from the perspective of really doing it right. Like I remember, this is this is kind of funny. My my father, my brother played a lot of soccer. He was actually to the point he was a, you know going to be a professional. He actually went to England and he hated it there and he came back. But 
that there was a coach that used to yell at a kid because he didn't kick the ball the right way. Mm -hmm. Well, the kid was one of the highest goal scoring kids on the team and here the coaches yelling at him. So if you got a tuner that does it and he doesn't do it, banish his way, it really doesn't matter (laughs) if you get the job done. But the way that banish explains it in the, the insight that he has from working with the OEMs is it gives you the why of, of why some people do some things. They might not even know why they're doing it. They just know this works. But if you have the why, if you have a problem or something you can't figure out, it's got to get easier. And I think that was why I really liked his stuff that I've seen, you know, all the, the videos, mm-hmm. because there was a lot of why. It makes, it makes problem solving a lot easier. I agree. I agree. If you did everything right, the, the way that he said, I think everything goes really easy. And I found things that I was doing wrong that I didn't know about. Little, just little things that were like kind of left out and maybe like, oh, well, you've got that particular computer. This applies this way. Mm-hmm. So yeah, a lot of neat stuff. All right. Let's see. We got anything else here? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Did Jeff figure out his exhaust as far as what? It the hits drone. the ground. The drone. Oh yeah. The, the <laughs> drone and it hits a car and rattles. No, no, the rattling is is gone. Well, how'd that go away? Well, I took it to a guy I knew who was very, very finicky. He's like the guy in the state. Okay, and he took care of that part of it. Um, we toned the drone down a little bit with a uh, different center muffler, but um. Oh, you did put it on? Yeah, I thought you didn't do that. I thought you said you were going a different direction <laughs> when when I was asking. No, no, you about no, it. I I didn't put the uh, the two individual ones. Oh, that's right. You had two little individual like quote unquote resonators yes. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, those are in my house. So what did you do? Put like a middle muffler in in place of like the H pipe or the X pipe or whatever it had? Not exactly. Is it a two X system? Two X's now. Okay. <laughs> okay. And that was on when it was dynoed. Yeah. Oh, so clearly it didn't hurt anything. No. Nah. <laughs> but it is still loud. Is it still as loud in the car? Not quite as loud. Well, I heard you coming up the driveway before the driveway alarm even said anything. Oh yeah. <laughs> But it's quiet out here, dude. You know, I mean, there's not a lot going on in here. <laughs> um, I can, you know, listen to the radio at a moderate level in my talk radio. I can have a phone conversation with no problem. But there's still too much drone for that sort of car. Yeah, for something you want to drive. I mean, you know, honestly, mm-hmm. not hating on you. I think I'd leave that thing just like it is. It's awful fast. <laughs> it's... It's just about a hundred percent sorted, maybe a little bit of touch up and how the trans functions, but I mean, it's a, it's a nice car. Maybe try to make the mileage a little better. Just do kind of the banished stuff to it yeah. to make it like as close to a factory car as you could and then get something and fuck with it. I, yeah. it you'd be better off, dude. <laughs> I know. I mean, I think so. <laughs> now you say, well, if you're going to build a race car, why do I need this as a street car? Um, it's yeah. But people say that shit all the time. But I understand wanting to have a nice car that you don't hate to drive. You know, like I like those little CTSs. Mm-hmm. I don't really want to buy a V, but I don't think I could handle driving something that's like as slow as my truck and that's as fast it's ever going to be. Exactly. Yeah, that, that that's a little tough for me to swallow. I mean, people people really jump down my throat about, you know, getting rid of my Shelby. And the one thing that I've said is I don't want to have a vehicle that I'm forced to drive and can't stand driving it. Yeah. My everyday vehicle is the one I love driving, and that's sitting outside. And, you know, just to show people that I am still <laughs> the the probably the degenerate that I was when I was going to Newark and met you, mm-hmm. uh, today I'm driving home from someplace I had to go in my little truck, and I'm cruising down the highway, and I get a red light, and here comes some idiot next to me in a Mustang. I'm like, motherfucker, because you just want <laughs> I mean, what am I going to do? I can't fuck with them. But I was like, if only those turbochargers were sitting right where they were supposed to be. I would have loved to have made that guy look stupid. Let's see, and that's where you're wrong. I have a big old Yukon, okay? Yeah. And if someone pulls up on my right side, it's not a lane. They're just making a power move. I'll whole shot them every fucking time. Yeah, because they're not ready for it. But they're the, not ready for it, exactly. But this was like, I mean, I was in the slow lane and he pulled up in the fast. I mean, it was two lanes. You know, it's not like he was going around me or anything. Okay. But he just pulled up next to me and he heard it. I like, still would have like, whole shot. You motherfucker. Oh, I tried. <laughs> 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 I, 
I got out on about five feet. And then he realized what's going on. You hear ring, and you hear the thing spin up, and the traction control <laughs> come in. He's all fucked up, and they vroom, fly away. Mm. And I'm like, motherfucker. Nothing would have been better to put the thing on the brake and build up a little bit of boost and just look at him, like making a face when the turbos are making noise. Be like, yeah, now what's up? <laughs> no, no, no such luck. <laughs> It'll happen. It'll get there. All right. All right. Any of you guys want to call in? Bail me out here. It's been a whole 25 minutes. Like I said, I wasn't planning on doing this. Yeah, I call, fuck it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, it's 908-751-0211. You've got approximately, oh, here's a dickhead right now. Hold on, let's see who this is. Damn it, I'm running my grill and I didn't have the phone interface open. Mm-mm-mm. Uh-huh. Oh, that was nice. Try again. Oh, it's just Luke. <laughs> What's up, Luke, Luke. you putts? <laughs> Figured I'd call him before Mogul did. <laughs> yeah, well, um, he might be working. It might be off the hook because I think I think he like sneaks off to the bathroom or something to call in during <laughs> during show hours because I think he works nights. Oh yeah, that's funny. So yeah, it was just a uh, just a strange day. Um, you know, we had planned on doing everything today and I feel, like I said, I feel bad for Tad. I mean, Tad's not exactly the most talkative guy in the world, but I told him that oh, I'm not doing nothing. And he's like, okay, Tom was going to call me when he texted me and told me he could make it. He said, he called me in a few minutes. He hasn't called yet. <laughs> so I, I don't even know what his story is. I don't know when he's going to be back. So I figured, and then, like I said, Jeff came rolling up the driveway and I said, well, Thanks, might as well sit here and talk for a little bit. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> You guys watch any of the racing this weekend at all? Yes, all of it. <laughs> Why, man? Your take on uh, that last race between Stevie and uh, and uh, the pocket midget. Wait, what race are you talking about? I watch NASCAR. I'm sorry. You watch NASCAR? Yes. When Lights Out Eight Nine was on, <sighs> I gotta I gotta check it out on YouTube. Well, the the truth of the matter is, I was dog sitting for the past week. Mm-hmm. I had my brother's dog. Um. He's not exceptionally needy, but it makes it very difficult to watch any TV. So <laughs> I, I didn't get to watch much anything. And to be honest with you, not to sound fucked up, but I've had a pretty good time watching the Olympics. I really have. Yeah, yeah, figure you've been skating. talking about You're that a You're a figure skating guy, aren't you? Well, drifting, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't watch yeah, figure skating. <laughs> I got to tell you, the bobsled shit, I'm sorry. I said it to Jeff the yeah. other day. I said it to I said, you know what, dude? That's cool as fuck. I would love to do that. That looks, and they had the one view, I guess it was last night or the night before, Mm -hmm. like where they must have had a camera like right on the nose of the bobsled, and that was just fucking amazing. I was like, oh, I got to try that. That looked cool. So fast. It is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, you're talking, they said that there were corners that were like over five Gs. How could you not want to do that? Uh, Hey, I want to go skydiving. I hear you. Yeah, I'm not jumping out of a good plane. Yeah, I know. That's, that's not going to happen. But going down a, a bobsled track, I, I'd try that. So, no, I didn't get to watch any of the racing stuff and uh, any of the, the you know, like especially the grudge stuff. I mean, where is that? Was that on YouTube or what was it on? Well, yeah, so Motor Mania TV has, like, live, live streamed it through their website the past mm-hmm. couple of years, but they live streamed it through YouTube mm-hmm. this year. So it was live stream on YouTube qualifying started i think on like wednesday Mm. or thursday so they streamed it from like five to midnight wednesday and thursday and then almost all day friday saturday and sunday any of the drag week guys go there that we saw or no yeah yeah team team 260 was there really uh nick i think he's got that z28 looking uh second Mm -hmm. gen yep they had that thing in the uh, they called it the DXP 235 class. So they had a, oh, what the hell is the size? 235, 60 something tire. It's like a 26105 radial class. And they had no, the rules for that class were no um, progressive nitrous controllers or boost controllers. So anything you make, you either make it off the line or, I don't know. It was crazy. So they, I guess they put a different exhaust housing on that turbo and the thing was spooling up 35 PSI in the line and they blew it up twice. They they found a motor in Jordan (laughs) and swapped it in the pit. 
<laughs> Those guys are too much, man. I give them a, yeah. they, they are the hardest working guys I've ever seen. After all that shit on Drag Week and all yeah. the shit on YouTube, yeah. man, those guys work. Holy shit. No, yeah, uh, this is Atlanta. Broke the internet on it because people are all like mad that they were blowing up and oiling down the lane and that they were on a real tight schedule for that whole race. So like, they broke the internet for all the people hating on it. And they were, I think Nick posted a log and he had on the line, it was at 35 pounds of boost, 14 degrees of timing. Which and that was all under thirty three hundred RPMs. So on a stock bottom end mm. engine, I think that was a little hefty. That but, thing had to be rattling at that. It had oh, to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it shits guts out on the line both times. Wow. But yeah, those guys like to work. Well, unfortunately, not being on Facebook, I don't know when this stuff is coming on. Yeah. I'll have I to do something about that. Oh, I am going and, to uh, Fayetteville. Uh, Next month, is that March Indiana. Madness? What if, is that? Is that that no time uh, race at yeah. the twenty third, twenty second, twenty third? Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know if that's smart Mad March Madness or I know Mike Hill puts on an event down there. Okay. Are you bringing your car there? And then uh, are you really? Yeah. Does it fit in a class or is it just? Run what is it, brung, bro? Well, I mean, you ain't running against anybody that's like you know real fast. Not not hating. I mean, I'm no. saying it's a it's a street car. Yeah. So we run at other street cars. Yeah. Well, I mean, we know what some street cars today can be. You know, like the the guy from Real Street. Oh well, yeah, my wife's over a thousand horsepower. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, it's a little tough. All right. Well, what else you got, Luke? Guy, Anything? And uh, yeah, they guy went three seconds in the eighth on a 275 tire, 398, and I think it was like 197 mm. on a 275. 65. I wonder if Anthony DeSoma had any guys down there for this. Oh, yeah. There was all sorts of DeSoma cars down there. Yeah, I haven't talked to him. I know he got uh, he got my dyno, like, I guess, like, the room is done, and they were doing electrical wiring, and he's got to come here and pick up, like, the water pumps and all the other stuff that, you know, because he, he just took the dyno, you mm -hmm. know, to, to make everything around it. Right. So I've got all the water pumps and cables, and he needs a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, I should probably call him tomorrow and ask him how it went. All right. You've been over to uh, the place, I don't want to say it online, the place where FUD's car is? I was a couple months ago, but I haven't been over there recently. If you're wandering about, I would be quite curious. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not hating on FUD. I get, up the, I get up that way probably once every other week or so, so I'm maybe I'll have to stop in and see what pro stock Jeff. All right. Yeah, I'd be interested to see what's going on there. All right, Luke. Well, thanks for calling and passing a little bit of time. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. We'll see you. All right. See you, buddy. Bye-bye. Later. He's a good dude. Mm -hmm. I think he's wearing men's clothes again, too. <laughs> Tom was going to fuck with him, something terrible, because he had a whole bunch of questions, and <laughs> I can't even get into it. But the questions we're going to get asked to the other guy, and Tom was going to preface them <laughs> by painting Luke in a rather bad light. Yeah. But we'll just let that go. All right. Well, look, last shot, 908-751-0211. Uh, if you got anything you want to ask me that would normally not be covered during showtime, or ask Jeff for that matter, uh, it's your last chance to call sure. before I push the music out button. It's loaded. I'm looking at it. Bueller? You know Mogul's going to pick up the phone. Let's see. All right, nobody. Fuck you all. <laughs> all right. Well, look, we're going to have, I think next week mm -hmm. is JC from ATI because there's some things to talk about there. Um, some new stuff, some new things that can be done. He's always a good guest. Yes. Uh, clear, concise, great tech information. I learned a lot. Yeah. He's a, he's a really good one. All of his shows have been great. So JC is going to come back probably by then. It, it, the show after you'll be through all banish this stuff probably two or three times because i watched some of it a couple times mm -hmm. um so we can have you back in mm -hmm. and we can have banish call in and we could talk about all that um and then there was somebody else that tom had lined up damn i can't remember he had somebody else that was good unless i wasn't supposed to talk about it yet maybe not uh let's say 403 area code hey, hello Hey, Mike. 
Who's this? PJ. Hey, man, what's going on? Oh, not too much. I'd play my hoser uh, sound effect, but <laughs> yeah, my whole soundboard's gone. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, lost all the sound. I opened it the other day. Hoser's gone. Tad's awesome's gone. They're all gone. So I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to find a lot of stuff again. What's going up there in Canada? Eh? Oh, it's it's fucking cold. How cold is it? It's, uh, well, it's warmed up a bit, but it was minus forty this morning with the wind chills. So, oh my god, that's four. Minus forty is. Fahrenheit and Celsius is the same, so. Oh, really? That's a crossover yeah, I, I didn't know that. Something That's today. a crossover point, yeah. Shit. So, so wait a minute. It's, For all the Americans listening to this, uh, don't mess with the thing with the C after it or the MMs and everything else. <laughs> You're talking minus 40 with wind chill? Yeah. That's My cool. God. What was it just, like, forget the wind, just, you know, you're just out there. Uh, minus 28 Ooh. Celsius. So, oh, God. um. How, I don't even know how you would describe that. Fucking cold. Yeah, that that works for me. Yeah, I mean, I mean, freezing zero for us is thirty-two Fahrenheit. Yeah. So well below, well, well, well below thirty-two, and just slightly above forty, mm. minus forty. Yeah. So, yeah, it drops pretty quick. Well, here today, I think uh, my truck said sixty-eight Fahrenheit. Yes, yes it was. So that was a. Uh, and I, I think I saw somewhere tomorrow that it could be in our area as high as like, what? 72. 72? I heard 74. Ooh, so, I mean, it's. That's, that's not fair because you're not that much farther south. <laughs> 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 yep. So it's, it's, uh, it's getting better here. How did you make yeah, out? Did you get all your stuff figured out? I know you were talking to Tom about getting some stuff and where, where do you stand? Yeah. yeah I got, uh, I got, a, I, I got that, uh, that bear coming over from Australia and I got another guy here that's, uh, Working on one of those, so we're gonna have a, an order for Tom here. Okay, good. Sooner than later, but I'm not I'm not ordering nothing until the actual engine is physically off the boat, and not you know I don't need to hit an iceberg or something. Yeah, yeah. The, the so, way that luck can go, that would be all you yeah. need. Yeah. So I, I got I got that in the works because I'm doing a gasser out of another Falcon for that. But uh, my my drag week car is getting I got the the heads back and some piston rings from Total Seal here so i can start putting the engine back together get that thing back on the road but uh i wanted to phone in before you left because i know a lot of people do the drag week thing which is awesome but rocky mountain race week just opened up their registration hmm. so you can if you don't want to do drag week or can't drive all the way to atlanta because that's pretty far south uh rocky mountain race week is another awesome streetcar event uh, it's a little bit cheaper to register and it's midwest so, in, now, when when does that actually happen? Doesn't that happen like June in in June? Yeah, I don't know. yeah, June sixteenth, I think, is when it starts, and it's it's a seven day event, not a five day. So you end up with uh, two days in there for travel and repair time. So it's a little bit more laid back. Um, it's not quite as publicized. It doesn't have quite as much hype behind it as Drag Week does now. So um, it's a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more easy going for for a lot of those people are looking to do an event like that without all the pressure or the eyes or whatever you want to call it of drag week yeah and rich Guido and bank Chef billy called in last time and that was i mean look it looks like a blast it looks like a lot of fun and it's certainly uh a good test environment for your car i mean talking about going up the the altitude changes and everything else that that's honestly where somebody like banish with his experience and how you program and why <laughs> really starts to show up yeah Exactly. This year, it's a little bit more central, not not quite in the mountains like it, it was uh, in previous years. I think it's just to help maybe try to get some more people to go to it. But uh, with how fast Drag Week sells out, you know, like it had 400 spots open up last year. They sold out in six minutes. Of that, there was over 200 people on the waiting list. You know, it, it's it's and it costs more money. It's pretty hard to, to get registered for that. Mm -hmm. and this year going so far south, Rocky Mountain Race Week is another great event for anybody who wants to do streetcar stuff to go to and check out and try to prove that their car is actually capable of being a streetcar, not just a trailer queen that drives like an ultra streetcar, you know, 20 miles at a race. Yeah. Where where does the event, I mean, do we know any kind of route or where it's starting? Like you said, it's, yeah, further, uh, it's further east. It's further east. in... Uh, Great Bend or Grand Bend in Kansas this year is the first one. Okay. And then uh, it sort of travels all through the Midwest. Um, I don't have my, I'm not a computer guy, so bear with me here. This is going to sound really bad. Are there mountains in Kansas? No. 
Um, I don't believe there is. Well, no. I, I, I knew, I would, well, if it's Rocky Mountain Drag Week, wouldn't you think they got to go around the mountain somewhere? You would think you would that think. would be the expectation, but um, like I said, this year they've they've really pushed it a lot farther. Um, they they pushed it a lot farther east from previous years, and I think it was more just um, due to track locations, trying to get some more people out. Because anytime you mention the west, everybody from the east freaks out, and anytime you mention east, anybody from the west freaks out. So this puts it back sort of centralized. Because they they have struggled a little bit to fill the event up, unlike Drag Week. So where do they start off? Yeah, June sixteenth in Great Bend, Kansas. Then they go to Heartland Motorsports in Topeka, uh, Rogersville, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Mo is Missouri, I believe. Then they go to Thunder Valley in uh, Oklahoma, and then back to Great Bend. That sounds like a pretty good distance between some of those tracks. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's just as big as uh, as Drag Week as far as driving goes. It's just a little different. They give but they give you uh, two different days of driving where you don't have to race to help fix the car or relax or drive or whatever you want to do. Okay, well it's uh, RockyMountainRaceWeek dot com. Apparently, uh, Cameron just yep. put it in the chat room. Yeah, I mean it. It sounds like a great event. I'd honestly like to register for it and see if I can and, get done and get there. But I I just don't yeah. know. The the other key difference, you win cash. Hmm. At Rocky Mountain Race Week. How much? If you, if you uh, over a thousand bucks in most categories, and runners up give get prizes and stuff too. So you can actually win something. I mean, Drag Week, you win if you're lucky enough to be the top in one of the thirteen classes. You get a jacket. Yeah, <laughs> a rather ugly jacket. I don't think Jason Mine's wearing his. <laughs> no, no, it's. Uh, it's it's something of pride, but it's it's kind of I, I received mats at the shop there and yeah. had to put it on. It's they're not very attractive. <laughs> the leather arms and everything else on them. They're, they're you know it's like a nineteen eighty five leather jacket for a high school footballer. Yeah, gotcha. But now that I, I think uh, I think that this this particular event has a lot going for it, and mm-hmm. uh, I mean like listening to those guys talking about you know there's just something maybe it's because of where I live. I mean, we're fairly congested around here. I mean, yeah. where I am is more more country ish. But I mean, mm-hmm. Jeff, I mean Jeff's here. I mean he went, eh. But it ain't nothing, you know, like, you know, going to Illinois. No. I mean, not where I live is I mean, maybe if you looked out my front door and you couldn't see anything else, you'd think, Okay, yeah, this this works. But if you go out, you know, a little bit in any direction, there's people everywhere. I think yeah. that uh I think some of those some of those events out there would be kind of nice. I'd like to do that. Oh yeah. I'm, I mean, I've driven, cause obviously going down to stuff I drive, I've, I've driven from Lethbridge, like Alberta, which is rural farm country, basically. I mean, our city's got, our town's got 90,000 people in it or a hundred thousand people in it, but you go from here and 10 minutes of driving and you're into acres of fields of just farmer's fields. So, and then going from that to Montana, which again is still sort of farmers <clears throat> through Utah, through the Dakotas into civilization, we'll call it, as you get to Illinois or Ohio or Indianapolis or any of that. I mean, there's not a lot going on in that area. It's all farmland. Yeah, see, and I'm... It's I'm not city, it's all farm. I'm fine with all that. To the cities. Yeah, you get to the cities and it's, yeah, people. Lots and lots of civilization. And, like, I've been to New York. I'm from Toronto. Mm-hmm. And there's just, you know, you drive for hours in any direction. You don't leave city. Well, I, I got to tell you, I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm far from a world traveler. I, I've been around a you know fair amount of places, mm-hmm. and I guess some of the older cities, you know, are they're older cities. Um, yeah. New York, you know what? You know what I don't like about cities that like everything. This is going to sound stupid. Is packed in, but everybody. Well, of course it's packed in. It's a city, but like when you go to New York, you there are certain improvements in the city you can't make because there's a building there. So like you, you, you've got little narrow roads in places and all these little off crops and ways to turn around. It's like, I, if it was a more modern city like Vegas, mm-hmm. I'm fine in Vegas. I'm happy as could be. Lots of big yeah. roads. I mean, it, everything's great. Just a park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. there were cars when they built that city. Well, then, uh, God damn it, they should fix all of them because I'm just I'm not really thrilled about the the city environments. It's just just not my kind of thing. 
But the it's pretty not a fan. it's pretty hard when they're built on islands too. Yeah, where where uh, nowhere to go out. We were at PRI. That's where that was, where I saw you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I wasn't find your truck. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't find my truck. I'm like, I can't figure out. I I walked to the. I told it before. And I walked to the restaurant. And I'm like, and I found a parking place. So I was happy. I found a parking place. I got the little thing. I'm like, aha, this way. I found the place, and I walked out. I had no idea how I got in or where I went. So I had one of four ways I could go to. <laughs> I, I think the second shot, I think I found on the second shot. But yeah, you went at least two. Yeah. But, but it, at any rate, like that city, in certain areas, it was tough. But it's it seemed like overall it was more open and more relaxed. Uh, I was kind of yeah. sort of okay there. I, that, I didn't well, mind it. No, I didn't at all. It was all right. That was the part I, I liked about living in Calgary. <laughs> Look at Scott. You know what I like about cities, Mike? Liberals. That's from Nitro Talk Scott. Liberal Fox. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. Man, me and you are going to have to have a talk somewhere. We're going to meet one day, Scott. Hopefully at a, at a Trump rally. <laughs> Fucking idiots. <laughs> Trump. Fucking liberals. <laughs> All right. Well, look, anybody that wants to go to this Rocky Mountain uh, Race Week deal, uh, get online, look it up. Did the did the registration start already? It it opened up on Monday. Monday. How long, how many people are they taking in each class? Do you know? They take, uh, they got a bunch of different classes too. That's part of the neat part of it. They have, if you got a slower car, they have a, a 10 to 1099, 11 to 1199, 12 to 1299 class, unlimited. They have an eighth mile uh, radial only class. They got a whole bunch of different stuff. So if, if whatever type of racing you're interested in or whatever kind of car you have or can afford to build, they've got a place for you to be. Hmm. So you don't have to worry about an 850 index class if you don't have an 850 car. Or if you've only got a 235 car that, you know, like mine's a 235, I can't run against a 275 car on paper. And, uh, you know, they got a class for my car to fit in a little bit more competitively than some of the other ones. So depending on where you're at, they do have a class for you to fit, a car for you to bring, no problem. They have space for you to get in there. You can win cash and see middle America, which is pretty cool on, yeah. on some big, long drives. So, so what did, like, I mean, it seems like drag week looks at it that like, if your car is too fast, they have the re reserve, the right to move you. It sounds like these guys gave you a wide enough class selection that you kind of have some place to fit into. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, for, for what I'm dealing with because of certain restrictions that I placed on myself that I refuse to do because it takes away from it being a four door old 1960s car and some of it limited to money. Um, you know, I, I find it really difficult for me to really fit into a class where I'm going to be competitive. I mean, I can't go against the, those anything automotive guys like Dozier and all those guys are too, they're too fast. They're too hardcore. They know too much about the cars they race and it's awesome. And they have a, a, a place to be the, the 750 or faster classes. You know, those guys spend a lot of time on the track. Um, you know, Dan Sates is a drag weaker guy. He races every weekend, all the time, in every radio class he can. He was at Lights Out. You know, he, he's always racing. He, it's hard to compete against those kind of guys with that kind of experience when you don't, you know, when, you know, it's you're under ice. Yeah. Months of the year. Um, and then the fact that I have a small tire and a single turbo and a limited engine space, and I won't cut the car up to fit a bigger tire or whatever. It kind of limits. I'm not going to be able to go out and run a 750 without screwing my car up. But Rocky Mountain Race Week, you run a 9, you have a class for you. You run 10s, you have a class. You want to run against anything else that's radial and prove that you've got the best radial street car, they got a class. You want to, you know, Larry Larson and uh, um, Doug Klein and these former Drag Week Unlimited winners have been doing dra uh, Rocky Mountain Race Week for the last several years too, right? So there's some really fast stuff all the way down to the slower street car guys. Mm-hmm. And, and, and girls too. So yeah. it's, a, it's a great, a little bit more laid back uh, atmosphere. It's good for the family too. So how, um, definitely we're checking out. How far is it for you to get to that one? I guess it's closer than it was, right? Yeah, this is the uh, meet a great band is about a 22 hour drive. Me to the start point for Atlanta this year is a 39 hour drive. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine. Uh, in Atlanta <laughs> from here, Jeff, how long you figure? About 12 hours. About 12, yeah, probably a little bit more than it took me to get to Indy. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it took yeah. me like 10 hours to get to Indy. Yeah, it's about 800 miles. Yeah. Yeah. Me, me and uh, Matt and I were talking about trying to find somebody who can stick my car, his car, Dan Nissen's car, 
uh, all, all the guys from this area sort of onto a car hauler, like a three or four car, whatever else, and ship them there and just fly. It's way easier and probably cheaper than driving. You know what the problem is? Like to, to ship my car from here to Florida was pretty cheap. I mean, I thought it was cheap in an enclosed, you know, car carrier, like the BMW type car carrier. It was, yeah. it was a uh, 500 bucks, but it's because they keep making passes back and forth between Florida and here. Yeah. I can't imagine that where you are, there's a big call to go where you want to go. You, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I'd have to see if you could find a rail to get them down. Cause we can get cars from where we're at mm-hmm. to Toronto, right? Just across the pond at Buffalo for 500 bucks. Okay. But if you try to stick it on a truck, it's 3,600 to ship it there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. So and then, you know, we deal with the exchange rate too, which makes it a little bit harder to deal with. Everything's 30 points plus on top of the normal dollar. So well, I'll tell you what, I'd like to, I'd like to attend that one, even if it's a spectator or, or follow along. Yeah. I think that'd be kind of neat. Sounds kind of cool. See some of those yeah, places Matt, out there. Yeah. Like Matt Frost set that whole thing up a few years ago. He's a, he's a good guy, a big racer. Okay. He's got some pretty cool cars. So that should, that's a good event. So anybody that's, you know, um, wanting to do a drag week type event, doesn't know if they're going to get in or can afford it or want to drive that far themselves. That's another really good alternative for anybody out there, though, that wants to go racing because drag week stuff to get into sometimes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, that that registration starts when first uh, March something. Uh, March third. Yeah, third. Mm. March third, yeah. and I think it ends up being they usually announce time, but I think last year it was 10 a.m. Mountain Standard, so that would be eight to twelve out east. I guess. Yeah, I was about as ready as I could be last year, and I got in. I got in pretty quick, but I don't. I don't know yeah. how it's going to be this year. I don't know if I got lucky because I know other people that were trying to get in. They didn't have any kind of luck, mm-hmm. so I got my well, fingers well, crossed. I mean, I got. I was number. I think on the. I think on my windshield, I got number fifty three. So I was fifty third car registered. But I was registered. It went live at. I think it was eight a.m. and I was finished by two after, like eight oh two. I was completely done. But I know people that didn't get in, so yeah. All right. I don't know. Well, you gonna you gonna try to do this event? I'm I'm I I need to find someone that's gonna write a check so I can go do both of them. But uh, I'm I'm tentatively at this point. It looks like I'm going Drag Week, and I'd love to do Rocky Mountain. Mm-hmm. It's just finances, right? So we'll see how yeah. it goes. I gotta stick my motor back together, and all right, man. All well, that. if there's anything we can do. I mean, I can't, I can't be much help for you. I ain't even that close to, to Atlanta. I was going to say, yeah. you guys want to get your cars here. They can sit here, but you still got to drive all the way to hell there. <laughs> ain't yeah. that close. Well, as long as, uh, as long as uh, I think some people, uh, a lot of power and speed listeners would really enjoy, uh, Rocky mountain and checking that stuff out and giving them some support, uh, especially those guys that, that want to do street car because it's central and it's, it is a little easier than, than drag week as far as travel time for a lot of people that aren't on the East coast. And it's a little bit less expensive. All right. Well, good deal. Well, yeah, we'll we'll push on that a little bit, you know. But, I mean, I guess, like, right now, anybody listening, and then I will try to get this show and the other show published, you know, tonight because mm-hmm. time's going to run out. You're, you're going to be out of slots if they're only taking that money. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, 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 good call. Thanks, uh, thanks, PJ. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem. All right, buddy. No will problem. you take it easy and stay warm, eh? Oh, I'm, I'm yeah, going to keep working on that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All see right. you, buddy. Bye-bye. Better. Canadian dudes are all great. So were the Australian guys. They were all, all fucking good people. I can't wait to go back to Australia. Never been there. Oh, that's such a great time. They're fucking pretty wild, dude. Like, I, I don't know. Like, yeah. like I really think there might be something going on down there because they're all pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt about it. But I, I had fun meeting all those guys. All right. Well, we filled uh, almost an hour with help from a, a few guys. Anybody else got anything on the forum that wants to say anything? Blah, blah, blah. Guy building a time attack car. I hear you, man. I, I think that road racing is a, is a lot of fun. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Blah, blah, blah. Mazda. Blah, Aussie burnout competition. Now, I've seen some of that shit. You guys are yeah, all fucking nuts. I over watched there. some of that. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, they're all crazy. All right. Well, I guess that's it. So, next week, uh, JC from ATI. Hopefully, you'll have all your homework done. Hopefully. I'm going to refresh my homework again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then probably the following week, we'll have Banish. And then uh, we'll see what Tom has worked out. 
then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So hopefully everybody will be here next week. See you then. Bye-bye. Good night. <laughs>